Uh, so we're going to finish off our look at uh, these uh, few Macross kits today with um, Hasegawa's uh, YF-21 from Macross Plus. Uh, I was always a fan of this design, though the YF-19 always spoke to me a lot more. That, uh, you know, the delta wing, or the, the, the forward swept wing design with the canards was just, the, oh, the, still, the YF-19 is still probably my favorite science fiction aircraft of all time. It's just so sexy. But the, uh, the 21, I, I've always been, I've always found very appealing. It's, you know, the royal blue color scheme with the yellow trim, the uh, unusual shaped uh, Batroid mode. Overall, like, it's a very unique um, aircraft in Macross. Um, for example, nearly every other uh, va uh, variable fighter from Macross uh, has shared one thing in common. The engines always form the legs. Uh, the same, it's been the same in the uh, VF-1, VF-4, VF-11, VF-19, YF-19, VF-19, virtually VF-0, virtually every other variable fighter that I'm aware of from Macross has shared that design in common. Generally, the same legs form the engines. In, fo in fighter mode, the arms fold up and fit between them. Always had that kind of one design feature in common. YF-21 breaks from that. Um, it stows the legs and arms inside the fuselage and the, uh, the engines end up on the backpack in Batroid mode. So it can actually, and it does in the, in, the, uh, in the movie, in the Macross Plus movie, it can detach the arms and legs as dead weight and still be fully functional as an aircraft. Um, Gold, the pilot, Gold Bowman, actually does that uh, to increase performance toward the end of the movie when he's trying to defeat the Ghost X-1 drone. Um, he just dumps off the arms and legs, which actually got shot off at the joints, uh, and just jettisons them at the, sh at the shoulders and hips, and then converts back to fighter mode and just is able to, to, to increase performance due to lesser weight. But it's a great battle sequence. It's, Macross Plus is probably my favorite anime film um, of all time. I admit I haven't watched it in a long time, but it's just, it's great. And um, the English dub of the three-part OVA, the movie was never dubbed, but the, the, three, the, the, the English dub of the three-part OVA, the main character, Isamu Dyson, is voiced by Brian Cranston. Heisenberg himself, uh, one of his earliest roles back when he was uh, primarily doing voice uh, work as opposed to uh, screen acting. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to take a look at this thing, because I wanted to buy one of these back when they first came out, like, 13 years ago, and I never got around to it. Um, so, now I finally have one. Let's take a look. Um, box art, as with all the others, uh, credited to, uh, Hideki Ten uh, Hidetaki Tenjin, uh, as seen in Macross Plus, copyright date 1994, that was original release date of the, uh, OVA and the film. Um, YF-21 just looking absolutely gorgeous. Interesting design though, and there's not really a canopy. There's just kind of this little bubble dome here. Uh, you can see the pilot figure, or the pilot inside. Um, the YF-21 doesn't use a conventional flight control system. There's no throttle, there's no stick, there's no instruments. It uses what, what they called a BDI system, a brain direct interface. It's a neural connection between the pilot and the aircraft to allow for faster response time and uh, improved, uh, improved body machine interface. Um, but you can see in the background here the uh, drone, uh, the Ghost X-1, which the two, uh, the YF-21 and 19, Gold and Isamu, uh, they uh, teamed up to defeat at the end of the movie Macross Plus and Gold, spoiler alert, uh, killed himself to take that thing out. Um, literally turned this thing into a missile and uh, turned up the engine output so much that as it's flying through the atmosphere, the paint was burning off the leading edges. And uh, he ended up colliding with it and killing it and himself in the process. But really intense bit of animation. Um got some uh, stills from the movie. You can see uh, the YF-21 being uh, uh, in the maintenance hangar, taking off, and Gold in, in the pilot seat. You can see he's, there's, his hands are not on the controls. And uh, just some finalized, uh, some photos of the finished model. 
Uh, we'll start with our clear parts. Not a whole lot for a runner this size. Mostly just uh, marker lights look like and uh, wing insert clear lenses here and there. Uh, and the canopy, while the aircraft does not have a complete proper canopy of its own, it does have a complete molded canopy, uh, you would simply mask off the dome here and then paint the rest of it. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it did pop off of the runner. Um, no idea how long it's been since this kit has been in production, so this, this particular model might have been originally manufactured as much as five or ten years ago, so it's not terribly surprising that it would have fallen off. Ooh, fuselage. God, I love this blue. Uh, I don't know how well it's showing up on camera on my, uh, my screen here. It looks a little bit more... Uh, um, a little bit uh, desaturated, but this blue is just so gorgeous. It's like a rich creamy blue. Uh, oh, it looks fantastic. Um, but uh, there's some really fine panel lining in there. Let's see. There we go. The color is great, though. Um, lots of nice panel detail. Really well etched. Overall, it has a kind of a stealthish kind of look to it. Being 1994, I think the uh, F-22 was first being designed around that time, so they probably took some design cues from that uh, in designing this. Uh, we've got the uh, ventral panel, uh, your pilot figure, which you can see he's got his arms in his lap, so they're not on the controls, but uh, you can kind of make out the hoses coming down from his face, or from his helmet, running over his shoulders. Uh, pilot seat looks pretty comfy. Um, some fairings and some venting details. Um, again, some really nice uh, panel detail. A little scuffing on the parts, but you know, nothing a little bit of uh, primer and some sanding won't clean up. Um, another ventral section. I'm not sure how these fit together. I'm guessing maybe that fits over like that, so maybe you can actually leave this piece off to display uh, without that panel on. But, um, Looks like some shutters, maybe? They almost look like tank treads, but that would be not appropriate for a Macross uh, variable fighter, so they're probably like shuttered doors that open and close on the actual design. Um, but uh, look really neat. Um, the detail on these intakes is really quite impressive. Got some really nice ribbing in there. Uh, not sure how well that's coming out. But, uh, yeah, in person it looks really, really great. Um, the uh, intakes, which uh, flank the, uh, the nose cone and um, basically f uh, form the shoulders uh, in, uh, in Batroid mode. And uh, engine intakes that fit behind these uh, right here, the actual intake trunks. Uh, I got the wings. Uh, now, the, uh, the wings for the YF-21... Uh, in the animation are shown to have what they call a variable camber. Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't know exactly what that means, but in the animation you can see they actually have some flex to them. At one point uh, during the test phase, before you actually see it in flight, you can see like it, uh, it kind of uh, dips in the center, or it can rise in the, in the center to, to, to change the angle of attack of the wing. Um, to improve maneuverability. It's a very interesting uh, bit of animation. No idea how practical it would be in uh, an actual aircraft, but it looks really neat. Um, but, God, I cannot get enough of this shade of blue. Um, no separated flaps. Not surprising. None of the Macross kits have had that. Um, but, uh, you know, good deep panel lining. If you wanted to drop the flaps out, you probably could. i um, guessing landing gear bay doors also. Uh, vertical stabilizers um, looks like they come in two parts. So you got the, uh, the upper half and then the lower half, which fits into this gap here. Um, again, no uh, no movable flaps. These would be the thrust vector nozzles. Um, really neat design there. Uh, rather than having um, ver uh, just upper up and down uh, thrust vectoring, they've got full three dimensional thrust vectoring. And finally, we got the uh, nose cone, uh, ventral side, space here for a clear part for a sensor. Uh, that's actually very common in a lot of uh, Macross 
uh, uh, variable fighters from this era is they all have three or four sensors around the nose cone uh, with cameras in them. Cut out for the landing gear bay, I'm guessing this would be the bay insert itself and uh, probably the rest of the cockpit tub. Um, upper uh, nose cone, there's a little antenna that fits right there. I'm not sure, which would actually be this thing right here. I'm not sure if uh, it's actually usable as a turret, like on a lot of the other ones, because this, uh, this portion right behind the cockpit actually forms the Batroid mode head. Um, and more often than not, if it's got any kind of fin on it, it's usually a, uh, a turret. Um, it doesn't appear so. It doesn't look like it has any, uh, any ability to pop out and, and move around. Uh, landing gear, uh, front strut looks really good. Um, got all of the, the standard uh, um, shock absorber stuff and uh, hydraulic pistons for, uh, for adjustment and whatnot. Um, landing gear wheels. I'm not sure where the rear landing, or no, there's the front landing gear and these are the rear landing gear. Never mind. I thought maybe these might have been on a pair of matched runners, but I don't think there are any. Uh, and the rear landing gear struts. And, uh, not sure what else, what else we're looking at. Um, yeah, I'm still surprised. The only copyright date on here is 1994, which is, again, the date of release of the movie. There's no date of release for the kit that I'm able to see. Uh, and our marking sheet, a lot of yellow stripes. Because this is a demonstrator aircraft, they wanted the color scheme to look really elaborate. So there's a lot of yellow stripes and Macross logos and gray stripes and really funky design pattern all over it. Um, model numbers and uh, the uh, Air Force Base where uh, it uh, operates out of. Just a series of numbers if you wanted to put uh, unique markings on it. Some no-step uh, markings and Beware of Blast. Uh, UN Spacey in several sizes. Uh, let's see, Pilot, Gold Goa Bowman, uh, General Galaxy YF-21, Code Omega-1. Perfectly legible, even at this tiny size. Uh, instrument panels, etc., etc. And, oh, we do have a copyright date, 2002-11. So I'm, I guess this was originally released uh, for nearly 14 years ago. So that's been a while. And uh, instructions start with some general specs. Uh, engines, I guess, are Pratt and Whitney. I guess Pratt and Whitney is still around in 2040. Um, overall length, overall width, height, uh, thrust. I'm interpreting here, obviously. I can't read the Japanese. Um, engine thrust rating, I'm guessing, maybe? Or, no, this would be the uh, overall aircraft weight. This would be the engine thrust rating. Um, and uh, presumably weapons uh, options. Ah! The last couple of kits I showed off did not have this printed in English. So this will be a really great step to uh, deciphering the uh, color marking guide for the two Macross kits, uh, the kits of the Macross, as well as um, for my 48th scale uh, VF1. So yeah, I'll be able to use this as a reference to figure out what's what. Um, assembly, as is pretty standard, starts with the cockpit and the pilot. Um, paint him up and uh, fit him in his nice comfy chair. Uh, canopy has a couple of insert parts that you fit into it. Um, moves on to the uh, landing gear bay, assembly of the nose cone, fitting of uh, the landing gear to it. Um, uh, fuselage assembly looks quite simple. Uh, a couple of insert parts, but nothing too complicated. Should be fairly easy. It actually looks like most of the fuselage fits together on either panel lines or in areas where it would be covered up by like the wings or other joint parts. Um, you got your intakes, you got your exhausts with the uh, funky ve uh, thrust vectoring. Not sure if those are posable. I know one, they have to be glued in place, but I wonder if they can be adjusted uh, to be like vectored in one direction or another. Um, not sure. I'm guessing maybe these are missile pods, like the, uh, in for internal storage. Not really sure. Um, 
and the uh, belly plate. Again, I'm not really sure why there's a, uh, a belly plate on there uh, when there's detail on the underside, so interesting. Um, there's a couple of points on the wings that's saying you got to cut out so you can insert the clear parts right here. That's kind of a that's kind of annoying because cutting out those precise little shapes is going to be really challenging. Um, but eh, it'll be doable. Uh, rear landing gear, vertical stabilizers, final assembly of the fuselage. Uh, gun pod has kind of a weird shape to it. It's uh, very triangular as opposed to there's actually two of them. Um, so uh, yeah, it's very triangular as opposed to the standard more tubular or assault rifle style of uh, the other variable fighters. Uh, final assembly, fuselage, uh, nose cone slides into the fuselage, wings, stabilizers attach, uh, clear parts, canopy, uh, cone, and doesn't come with the display stand that I'm aware of. Oh, canopy can be displayed open, incidentally also. I don't think it comes with a display stand. I know that Hasegawa was marketing a uh, an optional display stand that, uh, honestly, I always thought looked really tacky, but it uh, looks like you have optional components that you can use to fit it onto that. And uh, Finally, you've got your uh, marking and painting guide. Um, yeah, it says the uh, uh, proper paint colors would be uh, ninety-five percent cobalt blue, five percent silver. Hmm, interesting. Um, but yeah, um, doesn't look like it'll be too difficult to uh, to paint and uh, mark up. Just take a while. So. So for a fourteen-year-old sci-fi kit, this is a pretty fantastic model. Um, won't know for sure until you know I get to assembling it, which like the other Macross kits are going to be a while, um, but uh, it looks great, you know, um, hard to say for sure, but, uh, you know, just looking at it out of the box, but it looks like the parts fit should be really good, um, and uh, makes me want to do some research about the YF-21, because it's a really wacky design, especially in Batroid mode. Um, I mean, like I said before, the, uh, the legs not having the engines in them makes for a very unusually proportioned uh, Batroid mode, that, um, from what I understand, um, within the context of the show, the 21 design team was largely Zentradi, uh, as opposed to humans, so it has more design qualities in common with uh, Zentradi uh, battle pods or uh, uh, weapons, like the, uh, the Quaidlun Rao. Uh, the legs and arms, for example, looking very much like a Quaidlun Rao, the big shoulders um, resembling uh, that mecha very uh, very closely, um, but it's a great looking kit, and I'm eager to uh, to get it placed alongside my uh, YF-19 because you know Samu needs a rival, and uh, just ain't the same without one. Now I wish they would have done one of these in 48 scale because I prefer that scale over 72nd. Um, 70 second is just too small for me for the most part, um, too fiddly, um, it's a bit of a pain sometimes, but, uh, hey, you know, you gotta work with what you can, um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much it for Macross kits, um, but there's still a handful of kits that I still need to talk about, um, I got a, uh, uh, the... Freedom Gundam still to show off, as well as a couple of uh, super secret reveals which will come over the next couple of days. Um, so I'm eager to take a look at those. Uh, again, though, they're going to be the same kind of, you know, sit in a shelf for months before I ever get to build them kind of thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so for now, uh, stay tuned tomorrow for the Freedom Gundam, and uh, thanks everyone out there for watching, and uh, happy modeling.